So I'm really happy to be here. We, um, we're coming up on our fifth birthday of when we opened the store. So, um, so we still think of ourselves as a startup, but you know, we're, we're five now. <laughs> five. April 30th, actually, technically, we're five um, for the store. Um, we, we, won't, we won't go into that. Um, so it's been five years of growing, and I know part of what we're talking about is, is growth. So, I mean, growth on the charts, you know, it kind of looks like this. These uh, are our first year there on the bottom, second year is the red one, the third year is the green one, the brownish one is the, is the fourth year, the blue line is our budget for, for this year, and the yellow line is where we actually are. So that's... We're going to end the year, so we started at zero, and we're going to end, end our uh, fifth year at about 17 million. Um, and then here's a chart about membership, number way to look at it, first year, second year, third year. We're about up to uh, 5,600 or so. We should end the year about 5,700 members. And really, members, it's the people that make the co-op. It's not all of these numbers. Um, it's, it's people. It's how it started. Um, a lot of people, I think, talked about that we needed a co-op in Northampton. Uh, Northampton um, actually had a food co-op, food co-op that started in, I think, 1976. And it went until 1982 when Bread and Circus opened a store nearby. Bread and Circus was then bought out by Whole Foods. Um, and so the community lost their food co-op. It closed. Um, so a lot of people have been talking about, you know, we should have a, we should have a food co-op. Um, but then some people actually made it happen, which is a difference, I think. Um, so uh, the vision for this food co-op, you know, we, the community had a co-op that failed. Um, and the people that started our food co-op, what they were thinking about was the local food movement and what is the best way to build the local food movement. What's a good strategy? And there was a group, um, uh, CISA, that was working on uh, buy local food, um, uh, marketing local food, and trying to get more local food in the local grocery stores, more local food in the local restaurants, building farmers markets, that kind of thing. And they said, you know what we really need to sell more local food is, is a store, as a grocery store that's owned by the community, that it's a co-op. Um, and they thought really, really big. They thought, we want this co-op to be um, a, you know, a regular grocery store because that's where most people shop. So they had a really grand vision. We were going to do a 35,000 square foot conventional grocery store. It was one idea. And they tested their ideas. They, they finally scaled it down to thinking that a natural foods uh, co-op that wasn't terribly strict would be the would be the best vehicle to sell more local foods because it's good synergy between natural and organic foods and local foods. But they still wanted it to be more wide open for a broader section of the community. So the idea was to not be too strict on our product uh, categories. So we set about it. Our, uh, we looked at the community. We thought somewhere between a 12,000 and 18,000 square foot store was the right size to go with. Um, the location uh, that we ended up with was an old quarry that hadn't been used since uh, 1920. We ended up with a 17,000 square foot building with 94 parking spaces. There we are. Um, so to get this, like a few people talked about it, few people built into more people. Also, we got about 2,000 members um, that, that put in $150 in member equity. With $300,000, that wasn't enough to build our 17,000 square foot store. So uh, um, we got 250 of those to put in, an average of $4,500. And we raised $1.1 And that still wasn't enough to build our 
our store. So we had to get a loan. We also got a green building grant. One of the, I, the, one of the things that's so inspiring about, about the members of my co-op, um, you know, they think big and they take action. Like uh, one of the first uh, meetings that I went to, a member came up to and says, we got to have a green building. And I'm just thinking, it's like, oh, it's a startup, and how do we get enough money to do everything? And you know, I'm like, well, I know we can do what we can. And she's like, she's like, well, I know some people, and let's like, let's get a, a group together, and we can get a grant um, to make to do a green building. And and you know, th this member and other members, we formed a committee, and we got a four hundred thousand dollar green building grant, which allowed us to do all kinds of green features, including this like huge 196 solar panels on our roof. Um, um, you know, and I just heard Ruffin talk about, about um, you know, being totally sustainable. All of that solar, and it's only about 5% of our energy use. Um, if we were just an office building, it would be 100%. So you know, it's, that's a big goal to get to zero. I think that's really, really exciting. Think about bicycles. How are they going to generate all that electricity, run all the coolers? Um, anyway, so, and the other thing about the economy and thinking about the cooperative decade, we, we started in 2008. And 2008 was when the economy tanked, totally. And, you know, and I, <laughs> I, was, I was so grateful that we had gotten our funding, gotten the building built, and were open. And then I, you know, it's like, oh, the economy is crashing. What does this mean after all these years of working to get open? And what I really realized, it was the best time to open because um, all of the local farmers and the local food producers, everybody that was hurting, we were like there, new, to help. So um, uh, the, the, you know, we start, everybody cut back on advertising. We started advertising. So you could really see the impact that we were having right away. Maybe you could see it more because the economy was bad than if it was good. I don't know. So our mission, want to sell a lot of local food. We framed it as to create a just marketplace that nourishes the community. So it's broader than just the food. Um, our family farms is a local milk co-op. Um, eight family farmers, dairy farmers, they said that if we hadn't opened, they would have lost their farms because other stores were cutting down. It, they were our main feature. They were our main milk. So it's like, it's just eight family farmers, eight dairy farms in western Massachusetts. And that was one vendor. So of all of our local vendors, like, that's a really important part. Um, also fair trade. Um, uh, community events um, uh, and employment, all of these things are ways that we measure, measure the impact that we have, the, the good impact economy. So um, first year, about 20% of our purchases were local. It's about a million dollars that went directly to local farmers. Last year, our fourth year, we were up to 2.7 million our local farmers. And that was about 30% of our purchases. So our overall sales have grown, and our local purchases have been growing too. And we want to keep that, keep that going. Um, another thing that we do, we support lots of, of community organizations. I know you all do. But being new on the scene, I think it also made a difference. Um, the economy was bad. All the cuts to all the arts, all the social programs. So we were there to be able to do to sponsor events, sponsor fundraisers, help out a little bit. Even when we were losing money, we were infusing capital into our community. We now have about 107 employees. 85%, a little more than 85% are full-time with benefits. And um, uh, over 70% are at a uh, livable wage. Our goal is to try to get everybody to a livable wage after they've been there um, a year or less. And that hat, that was Thanksgiving, that's a turkey hat. We don't wear those every day, only special <laughs> occasions. Um, 
We have a lot of community events. Um, you know, this, this co-op idea, a few people have brought together. Um, I feel like we've spent the last five years sort of catching up to where a lot of you are in, in all of our organizational things. And we, you know, uh, we had our first profitable year last year. And it's not about profit to make the profit, but it's about being able to, to self-sustain this economic engine going forward and take it to the next level. So I think that's a really exciting part about growth. We're beyond just growing for survival. It's you know, on to, to make the community better. Um, few statistics. We've got 17,000 square feet and 17 million in sales. This year, it's going to be easy to remember those statistics. Um, uh, sales growth uh, this, last, this year, I think, is going to be about 12%, 5,700 members. We had our first net profit in our fourth year, 1.77%. Um, and we've got a big mortgage. We've got uh, member loans, 1.4 million, and nice chunk of member equity. And I think this is, this is how we started with a few people. And I think this is the, the co-op thing. It's a few people that can move the, the community forward with the vision of what we want to do. And I think it's a really exciting time to be part of food co-ops. And I would have never guessed that having the economy be bad and to have all of these challenges would actually be such an exciting good time. You know? um, but I think co-ops really have the ability to move us forward in a new way, and it's exciting to be a part of. So thank you. <laughs>